So, are all sins forgivable, or is there some that you just can't let slide? Let's talk about it. My name is Brandon Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. Hey, what's going on, everyone? And welcome back to another episode of Just My Opinion for my movie review for The Unforgivable on Netflix. And if this is your first time finding me and you happen to like the video, please give me that thumbs up and consider subscribing. All right, guys, we have another Sandra Bullock film, and I am a Sandra Bullock fan with The Unforgivable that's going to be on Netflix. I've been a fan of this lady all the way back to 1994 with Speed. I don't know anyone that is not a fan of that movie. But when I saw the trailer for this film, it was something that I really do look forward to. Like I said, I'm a fan of her. I'm also a fan of Vincent D'Onofrio and Viola Davis. Also, John Bernthal, who's in the trailer as well. So when I saw this, I was like, wow, this is a star-studded cast. I mean, this is going to be on Netflix too? Okay, yeah, I'm definitely on board with this one right here. Especially given the source material. I mean, she's a cop killer. I'm saying to myself, okay, Viola is saying that she did this in cold blood, but was it in cold blood? Was she defending herself? You know, I mean, did she have a reason, a good reason to kill the cop? I mean, we don't know. I mean, that is one of the reasons why I wanted to see this movie. So my expectations going in were a little bit higher than mediocre. I don't want to say they were through the roof or anything, but I will say that it is something that I look forward to and look promising. But before I get into all the nitty gritty and my likes and dislikes, let me just tell you exactly what it's all about. Released from prison after serving a sentence for a violent crime, Ruth Slater, Bullock, re-enters a society that refuses to forgive her past. Facing severe judgment from the place she once called home, her only hope for redemption is finding the estranged younger sister she was forced to leave behind. Now guys, this film is being directed by Nora Fing. I do not know how to say that last name. It is German. Uh, but here is the young lady right here. I've never heard of her before, but here is her filmography and directing credits. It's a number of shorts, and they also look like they are in German as well. But if you've seen any of those and thought they were good, please let us know what you thought down below. Now, when it comes to Sandra Bullock, I am familiar with a lot of her work. I haven't seen all of her properties, but I have seen a good number of them. And with her, it's always nice to see her shake it up on screen. And that's the first thing that I did like about this movie is I saw a Sandra Bullock character that I've never seen before. She's usually full of life, full of energy. Some may even call her a nice flower. But in this film, she came across as a hard rock or maybe just a piece of oatmeal that's trying to stay above room temperature and not mildew. Now, given the circumstances of her character, it does make sense to why she would be moping around this way. She's constantly always staring into deep space or like she's watching paint dry on the wall. Now that may come across boring, but it's not. Boring and this film have nothing to do with each other. She still does give a great performance. And while it may not contain that much dialogue, that's still okay because it is complemented by a great score by the legendary Hans Zimmer and David Fleming. I was saying to myself when I was watching this, like, man, this is a fire air score. I have no idea who it is, but I have to make sure that I talk about how great it is in my review. And when I was looking it up, I was not surprised when I saw Hans Zimmer. If you don't know him, he has done the Dark Knight trilogy, Dunkirk, Inception, a, you know, a lot of Christopher Nolan films. Hans Zimmer is that guy. He is what that it is. Anytime he is attached to a property, the film is going to have some great music. I mean, it may even just be a great film because Hans Zimmer is attached to it. So it just goes to show how great this man is because, I mean, he really did elevate this film with his composition. And Sandra Bullock's character in this film is Ruth, who just got out of prison. She was there for about 20 years because of a crime that she did commit. And you can tell early on that prison had a hard time on her. She's not a pushover at all. I mean, she's not a fighter. She's not an antagonizer going to go around starting stuff but if you do get in her way it's best to advise that you move out of the way or she will move you and that is just something that i liked about her character but i may just like that aspect of her character and not her character entirely because she is a cop killer 
But at this point in time, especially in the beginning of the film, we don't know exactly why she killed the cop. Was it in cold blood? Was it in self-defense? That just has to be discovered in this film. But it's not looking good for her at all. Everywhere she turns, people are upset that she is walking around with some newfound freedom, especially the victims of the cop that she killed 20 years ago. I mean, how do they feel? Are they okay with her running around outside, living her life as if nothing happened? Is she living her life as if nothing happened? What is going on in her mind? What are her thoughts? How is she processing her new day to day? You know, all of these questions are raised and they're answered. And I love the interaction and the dynamics between all of them as they're trying to work this out between the characters. And it is full of great characters. You don't only have Sandra Bullock fulfilling the main role. You have Vincent D'Onofrio and Viola Davis, who is a married couple, and they're both great on screen as well. The only knock that I would say that has to do with them is it should have been more of them on screen, especially Viola Davis. I mean, she steals every scene that she's in in every movie, and it's no different right here. I mean, she stood out. She can act or behind off that is beyond obvious. And she did it times two in this movie as well. And I loved it. We also have John Bernthal in here as well. He does a great job. He does a great job in everything that he does. And he's probably on the same level as Vincent D'Onofrio on this film. But, you know, Viola Davis, she does take the cake. She does take the crown. In my opinion, she was the best. I just got to be honest. So you have a nice star studded cast that won't disappoint. So that at least is something that you want to go see this film whenever you do get a chance, whether that's in theaters or on Netflix. I also love the way the film is edited. It because at the very beginning, you know something went down, but you don't know all the details. And as the film is progressing on, little Easter egg puzzle pieces are dropped in ever so often to kind of help you put it together with flashbacks and clever editing. And the way it reveals itself at the end was very satisfying. What's also great is every single character in this film, no matter what side of the fence they lie on, whatever perspective they have for this situation, Everybody is right. Every single person is right in the way that they feel. Every person is right in the way that they think. But everybody has a different opinion, a different perspective on it, a different outlook. You know, everyone is coming from a different position. So they're going to clash. They're going to bump heads. They're going to get into it. And that's just crazy. This conflict that's playing out on screen to where nobody is wrong and everything is everybody is right. So how do you resolve a situation like that? It's just one of the things that makes this film very, very entertaining, especially the ending. I mean, I have to ask you out there, audience member. Has somebody ever done something to you so bad where you can never forgive them? Or maybe you could forgive them, but you're just waiting for them to say they're sorry or an apology. Let me know down in the comment section below because I'm very curious. And I have to be honest with you guys, and I hope you guys can't forgive me. This film is right at around two hours, but I had to watch it in three parts. I was about 30 minutes in, got a phone call, and had to take fat. And then I watched another 40 minutes, and I was tired, and I went to sleep. Not because this film is boring. Like I said earlier, there's nothing boring in this film. I was just sleepy. And then I woke up and finished it. So there may be a plot point that I miss. But my only knock that just does not make sense to me, and I promise you that this is not spoiling the film, is Ruth's character, Sandra Bullock, has a little sister that she was separated from by the name of Katie. In present day in this film, Katie is no younger than 25 years old. My question, only thing I don't understand is if Katie is 25 years old, why are the surrounding characters treating her the way that they are? It just doesn't make sense to me. Maybe they would treat somebody that way if they were 15 years old or a minor, but this is a woman, a grown woman that's 25, and that just did not add up to me or make any sense. I'm very curious to know how people would feel about this film if they've been in jail or prison for an extended period of time, if you thought the depiction was realistic, and was it a struggle for you coming out trying to adjust to a new life in a new world that you're not familiar with? There's just something else that is intriguing about this film as Ruth, Sandra Bullock's character, is roaming around trying to make adjustments. But earlier I asked, is forgiveness the key or are you the type of person that would rather get revenge? All these questions are raised and answered and I can't wait to see what everyone talks about in the comment section. Now I will go ahead and give my rating for this film at the very end. But guys, that is just my opinion, and I want to thank you so much for tuning in. If you did like this video, please go ahead and give me that thumbs up and subscribe to the channel, helping me reach 35,000 subscribers. Another reason why you want to subscribe, 
please make sure you come back this Saturday and every Saturday, 6.30 p.m. CST for my live movie news roundup show where I gather all the movie and entertainment news that happened and talked about during the past week and invite a bunch of guests and we just have a kickback talk session going over all of it, geeking out and having fun. That's this Saturday and every Saturday, 6.30 p.m. CST. And I'm also doing an experiment from now until the end of the year just to see how much audience engagement helps the YouTube algorithm by pushing out my video. The more audience engagement it is, the better the video perform. So leave a comment, thumbs up everybody's comment, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. But guys, if I had to rate The Unforgivable on Netflix out of a one out of 10, I'm gonna go ahead and give this film an 8.5 out of 10. Yes, an 8.5 out of 10. If you look on Rotten Tomatoes, it seems like I'm the only person that liked it, but hey, I'm gonna be honest and always give you my opinion. But guys, again, I just want to thank you so much for tuning in. And before you go, don't forget that my name is Brandon Kitavery, and that's just my opinion. Peace.